please take the roll. Rousey? Here. Pack? Here. Herman? Here. Allison Osby? Paul Mary? Here. Mubauer? Here. Cummings? Here. Present, six. Would you all stand, please, while Councilmember Krause leads us in the invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance with our students. We ask for guidance tonight as we begin this meeting. May all those who participate in our discussions and our decisions reflect the values that we cherish in this great city. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a certificate of appreciation for each of our students, and now if you want to turn and kind of face corner with the camera. <laughs> There's really no film on the camera. <laughs> okay. Uh, which is Abigail? Just a couple of questions. Your name, your age, where you go to school, and your favorite subject. My name is Abby. Um, my age is 10. My favorite subject is reading and my school is Webster Stanley. I went to Webster Stanley too when it was a new school. And this is for you. Uh, my name is Alyssa, and um, I go to Webster. And my favorite subject is art. And I'm 12. Okay, well, thank you very much for leading us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. And now you can stay and watch a council meeting or go home and enjoy the nice weather. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Bob. I would have taken the same path. <laughs> All right, next we have three pro proclamation, the proclamations. The first is kids to Parks Day. Is there someone here that, oh, Chad? Whereas May 19, 2018 is the eighth Kids to Parks Day organized and launched by the National Park Service and whereas Kids to Parks Day empowers kids and encourages family to, families to get outdoors and visit Americans' parks, and whereas it is important to introduce a new generation to our park, nation's parks because of the decline in, of park attendance over the last decades, and whereas we should encourage children to lead a more active lifestyle to combat the possible health issues of inactivity, and whereas Kids to Parks Day is open to children and adults across the country to encourage a large and diverse group of participants and whereas Kids to Parks Day will broaden children's appreciation for nature and outdoors and whereas Kids to Parks Day is intended to get the whole family outside being active and having fun in the great outdoors. Now therefore I, Steve Cummings, Mayor of the City of Oshkosh, do hereby proclaim May 19, 2018 as Kids to Parks Day 2018 and urge the residents of our community and communities across the country to come enjoy the city of Oshkosh Park System and Kids to Parks Day 2018 and throughout the year. Chad, thank you. Yes, thank you, Mayor and Common Council, for uh, recognizing this day going forth on May 19th. Um, we have some very exciting things in the community happening uh, within Menominee Park <coughs> and other parks throughout our community. Strongly encourage many people to get out and enjoy the day. Hopefully, the weather is pleasant, not like last week. Uh, and you can uh, take advantage of those uh, amenities and things that are a part of this co community. But thank you very much. I think on behalf of the National Park and Recre uh, Recreation Association, uh, with us within the Wisconsin Park and Rec Association, definitely recognize these events and look forward to them going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Do you want to mention that the, this park will be opening a few days late, or a couple of weeks late because of the weather? Um, we had some media go out today in regards to Menominee Park Children's Amusement Day and the kids' kickoff festivities that were originally scheduled for May 5th. Uh, due to some shortfalls in our staffing areas, we we're going to defer that day to May 19th to kick off 
uh, National Kids to Parks Day uh, with the attractions and the amenities with the amusement center. So thank you. But also, if you know people that are encouraged and want to look for seasonal employment with our department, please go on the City of Oshkosh website and go under our various areas and uh, help get involved. So thank you. Okay, thanks, Chad. And one other thing, the Monomany Park Zoo will open on the 5th as planned, as will BirdFest be on the 5th of uh, May. Okay, thanks, Chad. Our next proclamation, whereas Oshkosh includes count countless older Americans who enrich and strengthen our community, and whereas Oshkosh is committed to engaging and supporting older adults, their families, and caregivers, and whereas we acknowledge the importance of taking part in activities that promote physical, mental, and emotional well-being, no matter your age, and whereas Oshkosh can enrich the lives of individuals by, of every age by promoting home and community-based services that support independent living, <laughs> providing opportunities for older adults to work, volunteer, learn, lead, and mentor, whereas our community can provide opportunities to allow older citizens to continue to flourish by emphasizing the importance of elders and their leadership by publicly recognizing their continued achievements, presenting opportunities for older Americans to share their wisdom, experience, and skills, and recognizing older adults as valuable assets in strengthening American communities. Now, therefore, I, Steve Cummings, Mayor of the City of Oshkosh, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2018 as Older Americans Month in the city of Oshkosh and urge every citizen to take time this month to recognize older adults and support them as powerful and vital citizens who greatly contribute to the community. And we have someone here from our senior center. Would you like to see if you know? I'm Judy Ritchie with the Osh uh, chairman of the Oshkosh uh, Committee on Aging. And we'd really like to thank the council for allocating the funds that allowed us to do a strategic plan last year. Uh, we think it aligns with the city plan, and we're seeing some very exciting things happen. Uh, one of the things that we also see is that Oshkosh in Winnebago County is resource rich in programs and other resources for people who are aging, helping them to remain in their homes rather than in facilities, and the quality of the facilities that we do have are excellent and so we as representatives of, of the Committee on Aging and Jean with the Senior Center uh, thank all of you and hope that you'll uh, help to support us further thank you thank you okay, thank you Our third and final proclamation is for the National Day of Prayer, and we do have people here who will accept this as well. Whereas the Continental Congress first declared a National Day of Prayer in 1775, making National Days of Prayer a long-standing American tra tradition, and whereas the National Day of Prayer became law in 1952 when unanimously passed by Congress and signed by President Harry S. Truman, and whereas May 3rd, 2018 marks the 67th Annual National Day of Prayer, and whereas the theme for 2018 is Pray for America, Unity, which challenged us to mobilize unified public prayer for America, making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace, and whereas millions of people from coast to coast will create a huge wave of prayer illustrating the unity of God's people or the circumstances facing us during this critical time for our nation. And now, therefore, I, Steve Cummings, Mayor of the City of Oshkosh, to hereby proclaim Thursday, May 3rd, 2018, as a day of prayer in the City of Oshkosh. And I encourage our fellow citizens to join in prayer, seeking God's grace and asking Him to touch the minds and hearts of our people and our leaders so that we may meet the challenges, the challenges that lie before us with courage, wisdom, and justice. And here to accept the award is. Thank you, Mary Cummings. I'm Mike Strauss. I'm the coordinator for the National Day of Prayer here in Oshkosh. Uh, the 67th official National Day of Prayer. This is not really a religious event. It is a spiritual event. If you believe in a God and you believe in the power of prayer, you're invited here uh, in front of the city hall. Uh, the National Day of Prayer is the first Thursday of every May, which would be May 3rd this year. 
which is a Thursday after next. Starts at 12 o'clock noon, goes for about 45 minutes. We have a number of dignitaries are going to be uh, uh, making their presence here. Uh, sometimes we have a very large crowd, sometimes it's a small crowd. Uh, as Americans, we have this freedom. We can come together, we can worship. It doesn't make any difference which religion you belong to or which church you belong to or if you belong to any church, it doesn't make any difference. If you believe in higher power and you believe in power prayer, you are welcome here. Uh, I'd like to thank the, the council and uh, mayor for doing this each year. And uh, we just invite you, 12 o'clock noon, May 3rd, here at the uh, City Hall. Thank you. Next, <clears throat> next on the agenda is a public hearing. This requires that I read it three times before we vote. It is resolution 18-206. Approve final resolution for special assessments contract number 18-02 Libby slash Nicolay Watershed slash North Main Street Area Detention Basin A Geneva Street Bacon Ave Avenue to the north end of Geneva Street B, Comet Street, 450 feet north of West Smith Avenue to the north end of Comet Street. Jackson Street, Bacon Avenue to 450 feet north of Bacon Avenue. North Main Street from Libby Avenue to Packer Avenue. Second reading, Resolution-18-206, approve final resolution for special assessments, contract number 18-02, Libby slash Nicolay Watershed slash North Main Street Area Detention Basin. A, Geneva Street, Bacon Avenue to the north end of Geneva Street. B, Comet Street, 450 feet north of West Smith Avenue to the north end of Comet Street. Jackson Street, Bacon Avenue to 450 feet north of Bacon Avenue. D, North Main Street from Libby Avenue to Packer Avenue. This will be the third and final reading of Resolution-18-206, Approved Final Resolution for Special Assessments, Contract Number 18-02, Libby slash Nicolay Watershed slash North Main Street Area Detention Basin, A, Geneva Street, Bacon Avenue to North End of Geneva Street, Comet Street, 450 feet north of West of Smith Avenue to the north end of Comet Street. Jackson Street, Bacon Avenue to 450 feet north of Bacon Avenue. D, North Main Street from Libby Avenue to Packer Avenue. Pam, has anyone registered to speak to this resolution? I have no one registered. I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion? Would you please take the roll? Rosie? Aye. Pack? Aye. Herman? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Ugrower? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried six. Next is the first uh, opportunity for citizens to address the council. Pam, has anyone registered? No one is registered. Okay. Thank you. Next on the agenda is a consent agenda items, and these are items of a routine administrative <coughs> nature that are voted on by the council in a single roll call vote. Staff recommends approval of all items. Any member of the public or common council may request that an item be removed from the consent, consent agenda for discussion. Pam? No one is registered. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion? Councilmember Palmieri. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, <coughs> this is actually regarding several of the resolutions here. 18218, um, 18219, 18226, 18227, and 18231. Um, and I just would like to, I guess, ask Kathy Snell um, if she's here. Oh, there she is. Um, so on each of these, they've either requested um, an exception or an extension to either 
extending amplified music after hours or an extension for um, sales of alcohol after our ordinances. Um, thank you for the extra detail in the packets. Um, I guess what I'd like to know is do they ever give you and a reason as to why they need to extend it um, <clears throat> beyond our, as our ordinances have indicated? Um, we've taken that along with their applications at this point. So when they apply, <coughs> they put down the times that they're requesting and that's what's been provided. I see, I see. And I, I believe that it, at least one of those applications, there was a letter that was attached um, where <clears throat> They indicated that the reason why they were asking for the extension is that in practice we had always granted it before. So it's not like they really showed like a hardship as to why they couldn't comply with the ordinance, right? <clears throat> Correct. That's the letter he provides each year. Okay. Thank you. I just <clears throat> I just have one comment about resolution 18-208. And this is awarding a bid for three of the loader stretchers to the fire department. This has been something the firemen of the paramedics have been asking for for a number of years because of the increased number of calls they're making. Uh, and delicately, I'll say this because people are becoming much larger. Heightwise. Tim, did you want to say anything or? Okay. Councilperson Mugger Hour. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, similar to what Ms. Palmieri brought up um, with the special events, and I know, <clears throat> Kathy, I appreciate you getting back to me so quickly today and with information. It's just a confirmation of going forward in those in those packets that you provide to us or the information that's, that's available to confirm that we can get more detailed um, breakdown of those costs that we're, we're passing on to the, to the special events. Just a, a simplified breakdown of, instead of total cost, what they're for. That can be provided. Appreciate that. That's all I have. Okay. Okay, we've got a little uh, problem here, so you're going to have to click yourself out. Thank you. Um, I see no other council member wishing to uh, speak anything on the consent agenda, so would you please take the roll? Crowsey? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Herman? Aye. Paul Mary? No. It's a consent. Do you want to pull something? I did. I pulled. No, you questioned. No, you didn't. You, you questioned. You didn't me. pull. Excuse me. Okay. So the consent agenda minus, minus 18, 218, uh, 219, 226, 227, and 231. Point of order. Yes. Vote is already in under underway. Yeah. That should have been done prior to the vote. Prior to my the, bad. You, pardon me, is, is, you spoke to something you didn't ask to pull. You, you had questions in regard to. Point taken. So point of order is, is the motion as is is on the floor. It is being voted upon. Present. Okay. Um, Mugrower? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried five, one present. There were no items were removed from the consent agenda, so we moved to pending ordinances. The first is ordinance 18 at 18237. Then fire code to update references to state administrative code for flammable and combustible liquids. Pam, anyone registered to speak to this? I have no one registered. Bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. It's so moved. Second. Discussion? Would you please take the roll? Krause? Aye. Pack? Aye. Herman? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Mugrower? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried six. Next is Ordinance 18 238, amend municipal code provision <coughs> adopting state statute re regulating purchase or possession of tobacco products by persons under 18. Did anyone sign up to? I have no one. Bring it back for the count to the council for a motion on a second. So moved. 
Second. Okay. Discussion? Please take the roll. Crowsey? Aye. Pack? Aye. Herman? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Mugrower? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried six. Ordinance 18 239, amend various sections of Chapter 30 Zoning Ordinance in Perrins Plan Commission recommends approval. Pam, has anyone registered to speak to this? I have no one registered. Bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Council Person Palmieri. Um, yes, Mr. Birch, could you just give a little bit of background as to why we're removing some of the things from conditional uses <coughs> and moving them to permitted in relation to state statutes that have changed? in recent months? Sure, most of the ones that we're moving under the conditional use permit uh, uh, from the districts, the SMU, CMU, UMU, those conditional uses in those districts, uh, we're, we're, te we're recommending taking them out at this point because we're still reacting to that new statute that was passed at the end of the last year that essentially says that if you have a conditional use <coughs> in your zoning ordinance, you have to approve that conditional use. You can put conditions on it that relate to the use, but you have to approve it. So at this point, we looked at some of the uses that were in those districts, um, and we thought we we have a pretty good conditional use permit ordinance where we were allowed to deny them with our current ordinance, with what the state did, it threw that out. So right now we're reacting and pulling a lot of those conditional uses out that, that we think it could be uh, more problematic if we don't have a decent set of conditions there, uh, or, or even just pull them out uh, altogether. So, we're, we're pulling them out for right now while we adopt or look into adopting a new conditional use permit ordinance. Basically, most of those uses will find their way back into those districts as either a conditional use or a permitted use, uh, depending on what kind of standards we develop with conditional use permit. Thank you. I see no one else wishing to discuss this, this issue, so would you please take the roll? Grelzy? Aye. Pat? Aye. Herman? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Mugwauer? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Present, or sorry, carried six. We now have uh, four new ordinances and there will be no formal action taken on any one of them this evening. The first is ordinance 18-240, remove parking on west side of the street and designate bike lanes on North Main Street from Murdoch Avenue to Snell Road. Pam, did anyone register to speak to this? No. Okay. Next is Ordinance 18-241, designate bike lanes on Smith Avenue from Vinland to Jackson Street, and prevent Cheryl's to be used from Jackson to North Main Street, no parking, removal, closed parents. Pam? I have no one registered. Uh, next is Ordinance 18-242, approve zone change from institutional in parens I, close parens to single family residential nine in parens SR-9, close parens vacant property, 400 block Monroe Street, Plant Commission recommends approval. Pam? I have no one registered. The final new ordinance is ordinance 18-243, approve zone change from single family residential extraterritorial district in parens R-1 ETZ, close parens, and general agricultural extraterritorial district parens <coughs> A-2 ETZ, close parens, to light agricultural extraterritorial district parens A-1 ETZ, close parens, property located west of 3097 Cleverill Road in the town of Algoma Perrin's Extraterritorial Zoning Committee recommends approval. Pam? I have no one registered. All right. Uh, we have new resolutions. The first is 18 244, approve agent, agent change for Menominee Nation Arena Combination Class B license. Pam? I have no one registered. Bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion. Would you please take the roll? Crowsey? Aye. Pack? Aye. Herman? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Mugrower? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried six. Resolution 18 245, approve installation of new sidewalks A, Gibson Court, south side from Fond du Lac Road to 170 feet east of Fond du Lac Road. 
B, West 9th Avenue, north side from Greenville Trail to Graceland Drive. C, West 20th Avenue, south side Montana Street to Iowa Street. West 29th Avenue, Oregon Street to 500 feet west of Oregon Street. E, Jackson Street, east side Bacon Avenue to 450 feet north of Bacon Avenue. F, Jacob Avenue from Fond du Lac Road to 100 feet west of Fond du Lac Road and Old Orchard Lane from Fond du Lac Road to 50 feet east of Fond du Lac Road. Pam? Yes, I have two individuals, Kelly Duacek, Rod Green, 2816 Fond du Lac Road. Hi, I'm a little nervous, so if I talk really fast or you can't understand me, just ask me to repeat myself and I can do that, okay? I live at 2816 Fond du Lac Road, and last week we received a letter from the city that said that you were considering putting in a sidewalk on our, um, it would be our north boundary line, and um, it's actually South Gibson Court. And I'm just really confused about that for several reasons. Um, the first reason is it doesn't make any sense to me that you would just pave that part of all of the places you could put a sidewalk in there because the reason that was given was for pedestrian ease, which would make sense if there were other sidewalks to connect to, but there aren't currently any and none of those are on the in that uh, collection of things that you're going to pave. That's one reason I'm confused. The other reason I'm confused is because I thought that this was uh, taken care of in 2004 when they put that road in, I understood there was to be no sidewalk, and if there was a sidewalk, the letter said that gave us ways we could pay for it, that it could be done, and we understood that we were not to pay for any development that had anything to do with the um, housing development, Sunny, so Stony Beach West, which is the only reason I could see that you would ever think about putting a sidewalk there is because there's a housing development there. Um, I don't have printed out pictures, but I took some pictures on my phone if anybody wants to see what, what has a sidewalk and what doesn't. I'm not sure what you would be connecting to. It's odd to me, and I guess I'd like to ask you to reconsider and to maybe not put a sidewalk there, um, at least not now, until there's some sort of plan for what it's supposed to connect to. That's what I have to Mr. Gody. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the the subdivision. Sorry. Is there a way she can show those pictures? I, I can pass my phone around you if you want. Well, I don't have the pictures, but I think if you let me explain, it may cut out the need for them. Um, essentially, the, uh, the subdivision that went in um, is scheduled this year to have the remainder of the sidewalk put in. It is not on this list because, it's, because it was included in the developer's agreement that was included with that subdivision. Those lots all have the assessment process, assessment process in place to allow us to put the sidewalk in without having to come through the order process. So the entirety of the subdivision, all the lots that were in the subdivision will have sidewalk installed this year. This section along your lot then will provide a connection from that subdivision to the existing sidewalk that is along Fond du Lac Road, road allowing the subdivision to be fully connected and out. The north side of the lot, um, north side of Gibson Road is not in the subdivision at this point in time and it's not developed at this point. Grades don't allow for the sidewalk to be put in there easily at this point in time without creating some drainage <laughs> issues. So the south side is the only place we could get the connection in. For We're the not part of the subdivision, you know that, right? Yes. Okay, so so are you familiar with what happened in 2004 when it was decided that any that the sidewalk wasn't going to benefit us and that the people who are already there didn't have to pay for anything, any development for the development that didn't benefit them? I am aware of some of the issues. I was not aware sidewalk is part of that at all. Okay. That's what, that's what we understood. That, we, if the, that there was going to be no sidewalk and if there was, we wouldn't have to pay for it. That the developer would have to pay for that. Because it doesn't benefit us at all. I'm sorry, I wasn't here at the time. I okay, <laughs> nobody was. That's what I was. <laughs> I was here, so I remember that. You have, Mr. Gody, do you by chance have a map? I I didn't see not, anything attached in the um, resolution. Sure, just give me a moment, and I'll have something.
Take the other testimony while we do this. There was yes. a second individual. There was a second right. individual. Okay. Let's have the second person <coughs> wanted to speak to this uh, resolution. Thank you. Rod Green. Um, good evening. Thank you guys for uh, for letting me speak. Um, I'm actually Kelly's husband. I'm also at 2816 Fond du Lac Road. Um, and um, just to uh, uh, emphasize and reiterate a few things. The uh, Gibson Court um, was put through as part of the um, sub-development. Prior to that, there had been a vacant lot there um, that Kelly and her uh, former husband um, maintained for a period of about 10 years when they moved in in 95 to about 2004, 2005, when it was decided to put through the road and begin that, um, that development back there. Um, so between um, the folks at 2816, Kelly and her, her first husband, that's how long this has been around. We're dealing with the second husband now. Um, and the folks who are, I, I think, our neighbors are at 2782. Um, there was much discussion about that at the time, both in uh, uh, April and May of 2004. Um, I did contact the city. I was curious if there were any transcripts of previous meetings. The best I was able to get were, uh, were the minutes that were provided uh, online. Um, and there, uh, there are some discussions from those dates um, uh, about utilities and the, the like. Um, there had also been an amendment put through um, to the uh, um, to the development at that time, that any improvements that were being made would be um, evaluated on a case by case base basis, and who would pay for that based on um, who actually benefited from it. So um, I guess there are a couple of things here. Um, the first is, as I say, that Kelly understood that there was not going to be a sidewalk. Number two. Um, we understood that there were not going to be any special assessments for anything related to the subdivision, and the sidewalk is definitely related to the subdivision because that's the only reason why there's a street there. Um, and uh, um, further to that, we're concerned about, um, again, loss of uh, trees. Um, there were how many trees? Three trees, at least, that were lost on the property when the road went through because the roots were killed. We're looking at other trees that are... Um, uh, there's a young maple there on the boulevard, for uh, for example, that um, that I know Kelly is concerned about. Um, and and finally, um, we're just curious how often this is going to come up. If we're going to find ourselves back here every 13 years to talk about whether or not there's a sidewalk there. Um, so, again, we're just sort of looking for that confusion to be settled. Um, but more importantly, we're we're looking for a, 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 a no on that sidewalk thing. Some of these agreements you refer reference are where they were in any of them ever codified or memorialized? Um, I, I would I minutes are one thing I'm asking is 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 and I maybe direct this to public works or whatever was there anything that was codified or memorialized where the city indeed said that this will not happen? Not that I'm aware of and a prior council wouldn't bind future councils forever on whether or not sidewalks could be ordered in. Any other questions for me? Sorry. Um, nope. that, that, was, that was it. I just wanted to make sure there was nothing that had been codified, memorialized, or anything like that. And then as you indicated, future councils cannot, or past councils cannot bind future councils as well. Deputy Mayor Palmieri. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I'm just wondering then as to the development agreement that would have taken place that you referred to Mr. Godey Ms. Duracek is it still Duracek okay um, mentioned that they had been informed that the developer would be pay, uh, be paying for that do we have that as a reference to look at the oh. development agreement as to I, I don't have it handy. I do know that this is, uh, Lynn, if you can jump in, I believe this has gone through some form of um, foreclosure almost and has been turned over to a different developer and has, has changed hands at least since that point in time. Um, I'm just not remembering 
Okay. So I'm sorry, I, I can't help you. Mr. Prasco was the attorney that was involved with it a couple of years ago when we were going through trying to figure out how to do some of the assessments and complete the lots. Um, if we could have the map pulled up that's on the laptop, we've got an aerial view of it now. Um, several of these lots down in the south portion here have recently been built, filled in. I believe this lot may be filled in as well, and this lot has been filled in since then. Um, several of those lots have put the sidewalk in the subdivision. As part of the ordered in sidewalk, we'll be filling the sidewalk in around the detention basin here where it's not, and are proposing to bring it through here to connect to the sidewalk that parallels Fond du Lac Road so that these developments back here have a connection to the sidewalk. It will provide this home as well a connection to the sidewalk out the driveway where they can sidewalk and connect to the sidewalk system and, and walk through the city. Steve, have you shown their house yet? Um, I believe their house is right, right here, correct? And so this is the stretch where we would be looking to install the sidewalk through this property here and will connect to the sidewalk that is part of the subdivision agreement to install. Um, to, sorry, just a point of clarification. Um, when we're looking here at uh, Gibson Court making that loop and then Beachcomber Court dips down to the south, um, there has been development of one lot on the west side of Beachcomber Court, but that um, southeast corner is still vacant. There are still no buildings there. Thank you. The other gentleman wants to speak. Pardon? The other gentleman. Oh, I took the board. <clears throat> my apologies for not uh, registering ahead of time. Uh, my name is Troy Hart. I live on uh, at 3299 Old Orchard Lane, which is mentioned at the bottom of the list. Uh, I just needed uh, clarification on um, where that sidewalk's going to be going, because as I read it, we already have a sidewalk where it's described there. The limits are approximate on there. There is sidewalk in there we need to get from essentially the sidewalk stops short of the right away line on Fond du Lac Road. It varies some distance in there, so it was left at 50 feet to ensure that we had adequate distance, that we didn't come up short in that distance. We're only planning to install from where it ends out to the intersection, out to the right of way of Fond du Lac Road. The city then assumes the cost of the handicap ramp beyond there. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, just one comment. As I, uh, the original developer is deceased. I think it has gone through some bankruptcies and so forth. Uh, do we know if the original development plan did show sidewalks? The original development plan certainly had sidewalks within the subdivision. I do not know about this particular lot. Our code would have required it at the time. Okay, so that's about the only thing I can tell you that our code would have required it. But would there have been a developer's agreement going back that many years, or it may not have been as elaborate as we have them now, but they would have had they would have had some type of agreement. We could certainly look that up. Okay, thank you, Deputy Mayor Palmieri. <clears throat> so. Most people know that I am very pro sidewalk in the city, um, very pedestrian oriented. Um, I guess I'm just thinking that um, there's a lot of like unknowns <coughs> about whether or not there was something in the minutes, whether or not there was something in the developer's agreement. Would it be appropriate for us to remove A and lay that over and go with the remaining uh, B through G? I'd like to make a motion to lay over or remove A from 18245. Um, divide the issue. Divide the issue. Thank you. I'll second that. Discussion. <coughs> Discussion. Does, that, does that create issues related to the bidding and the planning and the work? This, um, as long as it comes back soon, will be in time that this work would not be anticipated to start until June 1. 
So we've got a little time. We were trying to get ahead of ourselves. So uh, we can bring it back subsequent meeting for the council. Can we bring it back in two weeks? I, I don't see why not. So we have <clears throat> we have a motion and a second. We've discussion. Any further discussion? Two men. The motion is to divide the issue into sub A and basically the rest, everything else. Okay. So we are voting on whether to divide, divide the issue. Divide it. Would you please take the roll? It's just one moment. It's Mr. Point, Bob. point of order. Can't can it be amended to strike A? The inference is that you want to bring it back, so striking a okay. this way, All right. you can defer action on one and take action All on right. another, or vice versa. Yeah. Would you please take the roll? Prosey? Aye. Pack? Aye. Herman? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Mugrower? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried six. <clears throat> Now it would be appropriate to have a motion to lay over A. So moved. Would. Second. Mr. Peck. If I may <clears throat> offer a friendly amendment to lay over to the, uh, to the following council meeting, which would be May 8th. May. We technically don't allow friendly amendments, but would that was your amend intent. Your, that, <laughs> I assume that was your intent. I will amend it to Mr. Peck's just so uh, layover we, date. Good. And the second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion <clears throat> or further discussion? Would you please take the roll? Crosey? Aye. Peck? Aye. Herman? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Mugurower? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried six. Now we'll be voting on resolution 18-245 minus section A. Now do we need a motion? Mm -hmm. So move. Second. Se discussion? Can you please take the roll. Rosie? Aye. Paul Mary, or I'm sorry, Pack? Aye. Herman? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Mugrower? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried six. Next is resolution 18-246, approve change order number one for public works contract number 16-22, Marion Road Water Tower replacement, $30,875.07. Is anyone registered to speak to this? No one is registered. Bring it back to the council for motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion. Please take the roll. Crozy? Aye. Pack? Aye. Herman? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Mugrower? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried six. We have now one new resolution, which is resolution 18 247. <laughs> Approve special event Hmong Service Center, Inc. to hold the Hmong National Labor Day Festival at the Winnebago County Community Park September 1 and 2, 2018. Pam? Mia Vang. 1017 Kansas Street. Good evening, Mayor and Common Council. This is my first appearance here. Um, I'm proud to say that I am um, a Hmong American and proud to be here today. Um, I don't typically voice my opinion as in our culture, we don't get that opportunity to do so. So today, here I stand, um, voicing my opinion on this matter. Um, I'm sure you guys are well aware of kind of the situation that is kind of going on between the Hmong community here in Oshkosh. Um, I, I do agree that we should hold a Hmong event to celebrate us and our culture and to be able to share it with Americans. Mm -hmm. um, but what you guys don't see is that this event is dividing our culture. Um, the people in Oshkosh here. Um, so I ask that you guys really look into this before you guys approve it, um, because there are things that you guys may not see on the surface level. Um, and so 
I'm coming here today to let you guys know that you know there may be some legal matters and things going on that need to be looked at before you guys approve of this event. Like I said, I fully support um, the Hmong community and being able to present ourselves, but at the same time, there are things that I wish that you guys would look at so that you guys can help the Hmong community thrive and not divide. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Chain Mua, 3928 Brooks Road. Go ahead and start speaking. Good evening. My name is Chay Mua. Before I speak, I would like to, to uh, introduce my colleagues. I am the new president uh, being elected by the uh, resident for the Mount Seven Center. My, my colleague is the vice president is Eric Xiong. The treasurer is Peng Yang. And the secretary is Matt Strong. And I also have uh, three advisors. One's uh, Pao Shong and one's Ki Yang. And the other one's uh, Chu Vang Law. They're not, or oh, they're working second shift, so they're not here. Uh, good evening, Mayor uh, Steve Cummins and other. City Council members, thank you for giving me Shane Moore, the president of the Mount Service Center. Give me an opportunity to speak out, speak with all the event, all the, uh, this evening, tonight. I would like to ask you to give the Mount Service Center a special permit for the Mount Festival health, help on health during the Labor Day weekend at Winnebago, uh, Winnebago County Park. I believe that this event will bring more revenue for the city and also for, and also would like to build a great relationship with the local government and local communities. And also, working with all you, and thank you. And also, the, the special permit right now is, I understand that the memorial Permit was uh, approved for Mi Yang, the former president. And the Labor Day is, we're gonna dis discuss tonight, and then hopefully you guys can look over and see who's the right president, and who's the current president, and who's the former president. And the permit the, for the Labor Day is give to Mi Yang, but she's a former president, so hopefully you guys can understand the situation that we have right now. And uh, hopefully this Liberty event, hopefully me and my colleagues and all the residents join together, work together, but only one president, not two presidents. She can volunteer to help, to, to help run the event. And will contribute the money to the community 
uh, the city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am? Me, Yang, 2825 Prairie Wood Drive. Good evening. My name is Mi Yang. I reside at 2825 Prairie Wood Drive in Oshkosh. I am the current president of the Mon Service Center. We elected for a second term by the voting members of the Mon Service Center on November 5th, 2017, according to the organization's bylaw. Before I continue on, I just want to make a comment that the individuals who spoke before me are not members of the organization. They did not pay their dues, and they're not official members. I want to continue saying that the Hmong Service Center is a nonprofit organization founded in 1984 by the early Hmong families moved to the Ashkash area, and the purpose of the organization was to assist families, individuals, with economic, education, language, and cultural barriers to become self-sufficiency, productive citizens, and contributor in the community. My husband and his family were one of the early families helped found at the Hmong Service Center back in 1984, and he has continued to stay active and serve multiple times on the board. I myself have been a voting member and supportive member since 1987. Prior to 2000, the organization was primarily funded by local and state grants. But for about the last 15 years, the organization has relied almost totally on funds raised with special events such as the Memorial and the Labor Day Weekend Festivals. But due to poor and corrupted leadership, the organization has left it with nothing after 15 years. As the first Hmong female president of the Hmong Service Center, I was elected to restore the organization financially and restore the necessary services and programs. In 2016 and 17, with countless hours of hard work and support from a handful of members, we were able to raise over $160,000. We have allocated funds to help individuals and other organizations that needed help in the last two years. We allocated $10,000 for student scholarships this year. We are in the process of putting together a language in a culture classes for Hmong youth or anyone who may be interested. So our rich language and cultures continue to live on. Our biggest goal is to have save and purchase a building we can call the Hmong Center that will serve as the main resource center for not just the Hmong community, but the community at large. This is something many Hmong families had talked and dreamed since the first Hmong family resettled in Ashkash in June of 1980. This could not happen because of corruptions and embezzlements by our former leaders and our clan leaders. As a community, we cannot let corruptions continue. I believe that with the city's help and support, we can turn this dream into reality. Tonight, I call into your support of the Labor Day Festival event as well as future events of the Hmong Service Center. These special events are the lifeline and hope to help grow the Hmong Service Center for not just the Hmong community, but the community at large and most important for our children. Thank you.
Thank you. Pam? I have no other individuals registered. And bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So, so moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Krause. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I had a couple of private citizens of Ashkosh um, look over the agenda so people actually do read it when it's posted on Fridays. Um, they looked at the police department staffing levels, the preliminary estimate of $25,000, and I was just wondering if Chief Smith could um, explain that for the citizens. Thank you. You want me to explain the just staffing? Just the, the, the cost, why it's charged that much compared to other comparable <laughs> festivals. You gotta see how this is over 10,000 people. So that's 5,000 5, people. So each, each event is looked at individually based upon the, the event that is occurring, based upon <coughs> what the event organizer is looking to accomplish, based upon the, the, the grounds that the event is, is actually on. And it's, it's taken on a case-by-case -case basis. We also look at any type of, of um, intelligence we may gather as it relates to the particular event or any type of concerns that may come about because of an event. And, and then we staff it accordingly. And it works its way through the Special Events Review Committee. Um, and based upon the needs of the event, we establish our staffing levels. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Just one comment. I've had the pleasure of attending uh, the past Memorial Day uh, celebration and Labor Day, and they are phenomenally, phenomenally well run, well organized. Uh, there has to be at least 10,000 people there. Um, it, it's, it, it's just a, uh, it, it's been a joy to go to these, and Mi Yang has been a very valuable member of our Unity and Community Steering Committee. Uh, she has phenomenal <laughs> um, organizational skills. Um, so I think this is a, these are two of the, these events are two that the city can be very proud of, um, and if the council hasn't had the chance to go to them, I would suggest you attend Memorial Day and Labor Day. Uh, come on, hungry, you will leave full. Um, but they're just phenomenally of all the events in the city, they're probably the best organized and best run that I've been to. Councilman Herman, thank you, Mayor uh, Michelle. Obviously, there's a disagreement uh, amongst the organization of who actually controls the Hung Service Center and the event, but you're comfortable that the permit that we're issuing goes to the service center and whoever coordinates it isn't, a, isn't our issue. Our issue is strictly issuing a permit and making sure that it's a safe and enjoyable event for all that come. And staff is comfortable with the permit being issued to the service center, not to individuals. Correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, okay. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Palmieri. Um, actually, he, ans he asked my question. So she answered it. Good. Okay. I see no further discussion. Would you? Wait, Mayor? Just, just while well, I make a comment, um, I do support this event. I think it's a great event, and I actually have worked it because I work for the county park, so we're part of that system. And it's very well, uh, it's a great event for the community. Um, I know there's a disagreement amongst the, who's president, who's vice president, who's board of directors, but that's not our fight here. That's not our, we're issuing the permit to the Hmong Service Center, period. You're, that service center is the applicant for this event. So um, whatever disagreements the members have, <laughs> who's in charge, that's that's not a city council issue. You have gone to court on the issue back in 14 and 15, um, and I think it was resolved then, so I don't know where that issue is now, but um, we approved the permit to the organization, not the individual people. So um, just to clarify that. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, Councilman Mugerauer. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mr. Herman's point, I guess I do, I have a question, I guess, as to, we've run into issues before with not necessarily knowing who is the authorized agent of a particular organization. Is there any concern from city staff regarding who is the actual 
name behind the organization who's requesting the permit and who's liable for for that event. Question or no. I mean, from our standpoint, turnover on boards of these groups is very common. Uh, council members have uh, abstained because they're involved directly in organizations. So we understand that that comes and goes. Uh, certainly, this is unusual. Uh, if we had any reason to believe that there was a problem that was going to prevent them from fulfilling the duties uh, and responsibilities that are in this permit, we would bring it back to council and ask the council to to revoke it. But for the purposes of the, uh, allowing the organization to plan, hopefully resolve whatever issues they may have, uh, staff believes it's appropriate to to award the uh, permit at this time. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Roll off. If there's no further discussion, would you please take the roll? Prosey? Aye. Pack? Aye. Herman? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Mugger? <coughs> Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried six. Next, we have council discussion, direction of the city manager, and future agenda items. Uh, future <laughs> agenda items workshop with school board Monday, April 30th. Uh, location and time to be determined. Have we? That's been moved. It was, uh, we were informed that uh, Superintendent Mack would not be That's available right. on April 30th. Uh, the school board has in turn invited the council to attend as part of their regularly scheduled board meeting on Wednesday, May 23rd. Um, and so if, if we can pull that off, uh, that would be great. We don't always get everybody there, uh, but uh, I think before, uh, Mr. Mack retires. I think the, the board wanted to have one more meeting to, to make sure that proper handing off from uh, Mr. Mack to uh, our new superintendent was taking and place. And I believe she will be there? I wasn't told that, but I believe that she's going to be in the neighborhood the around neighborhood. that date. So I would, if she's in town, I would expe expect that she would okay. be there. Our so the 23rd, I mean, it's May 23rd. May 23rd. Next, we have a workshop on the 2019 through 2023 ambulance contract with outlying communities. That will be May 8th at 5:15. That's prior to the council meeting. Deputy Mayor Palmieri. Just a question, um, Mr. Olaf. Before that uh, workshop, will we be getting in materials in advance of that? <laughs> That's the idea. Uh, Chief Franz is. This is one of Chief Franz's bucket list items. So. Uh, the minute uh, he gets it done, we will get it to council as soon as possible. Uh, my hope would be at least uh, in your packet the weekend prior. Thank you. Uh, next we have a council workshop on public work works contracts. Uh, we're looking at the future fifth Tuesday and the two dates that have been recommended would either be May 29 or July 31. Mr. Robbie Tarby. Um, I have been uh, coordinating with um, Mr. Ben uh, Jordan of the University of Wisconsin Transformation, Transportation Information Center um, and trying to organize a, uh, a cooperative presentation. Uh, we very quickly recognized that uh, about you know, 30 to 45 minutes prior to a council meeting uh, would not be a sufficient amount of time to, to try to convey the amount of information that um, we would need to very quickly try to convey. So we are looking at trying to do a, a fifth Tuesday workshop so we can get an hour and a half to two hours worth of time. Um, in speaking with uh, Mr. Jordan, um, he does have a meeting uh, in the afternoon in Madison on the fifth Tuesday in May. He is unsure of the time that that meeting will take, so he is unable to commit at this time to the May uh, 5th Tuesday. Um, at this time, the 5th Tuesday in July, he is uh, wide open and would be able to attend. Would you like a commitment tonight from the council as if the 31st works? Yeah, I would suspect that if that date didn't work, <laughs> Ms. Larson would be promoting that as one of the council workshop dates. So. We're kind of counting on a fifth Tuesday unless you're not going to be in town for whatever reason. So uh, July 31st, you're July, Yeah, July Tuesday, 31st. July 31st. So that would be in our early period of the budget already, correct? One of the early Could budget. we tie that together if it's an hour, hour and a half, depending on what Ms. Larson might want to roll on top of that? We could try to see what we can do. About you know, make it a two-hour 
you know, hour and a half, hour for the workshop, and a half hour, 45 minutes if there's some items that would want to be preliminary discussion items for the upcoming budget. What I would uh, suggest is that we try to provide what we can on that date, but uh, as in talking with Mr. Robbie, he believes that a workshop of this nature is going to take a little more time, so it's probably going to be about a two-hour workshop. Was uh, was this workshop, this first I heard of it, was this requested by council members? Yes, this yes, was the this one was, about change orders. This, this is to do with trying to go through change orders and trying to understand what circumstances no. are about that. So uh, if that, that was direction I received from council on that. So we just worded it public works contracts in a general category, but it's change orders, it's engineering services, it's things of that nature. Okay. So is a 31st agreeable? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next is a presentation to the Sustainability Advisory Board and the Common Council by UWO students on their sustainability study, and that would be May 7 at 6 p.m. That's their regularly scheduled SAB right. meeting. Unfortunately, they had originally asked for April 30th. I told them no because of the school board. So I apologize for bouncing them around, but I think they've yeah. committed to April 7th, so, or excuse May me, 7th. May 7th. So, uh, and that'll, that'll be at the, in, the, in room 404 uh, along with the regularly scheduled SAB meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, I know, I now we have the second opportunity. Mr. Mr. Mayor, uh, staff has two more items we want to just bring to your attention. Uh, two upcoming meetings that we'll, we'll be looking at down the road. Uh, the first one has to do with the uh, adoption of Act 317, which was the modification to regulating rental inspection programs for cities. Um, staff uh, has just just been made made uh, available a copy of Act 317. Uh, it was just signed into last week. We're reviewing the legislation. There are two major changes that are going to impact our ordinance. Our ordinance will absolutely need some changes. Um, it would allow the city to designate areas for inspection, which actually, uh, as, as Mayor Cummings and Deputy Mayor Palmieri and I, we actually advocated for that. So that, from our standpoint, was a very positive outcome. Uh, the, free, the fee structure is much more restrictive than it was. That's probably the biggest challenge that we have, and that's going to take us some time for us to, to go through that. There are some other changes. I was very pleased uh, that the legislator, legislators that were reviewing this took a copy of our inspection checklist, and that was largely the inspiration for the final version, so I think that that's good. The downside, of course, is that the, the fee is, uh, is limited, and uh, that's going to impact our budget, so we're going to have to come back to you with that. We don't expect that will be until after June 1st, but now that the uh, act has been signed into place, we want to make sure that that's at least out there. I think it's important that we, whatever we provide, we also provide to the um, Rental Housing uh, Advisory Board. And, and I've also pledged to the uh, Winnebago Apartment Association, we would certainly reach out to them as well. So we've got a little work to do, but I just wanted to let you know, it won't be until after June 1st. I'm not proposing a date. At this time, staff's halted any inspections unless there are complaints. So we are still doing complaint-driven inspections, right. but we're not doing anything. So we can, we'll have to work it through the, the council schedule, but uh, as staff gets more aware of some of the things that we're gonna be needing to do, and as we get input, we have to figure out exactly what we would present to the rental housing advisory uh, committee, but that's appropriate, and uh, Councilor Palmieri's on it, and. Uh, when Citizen Mugrower was uh, on it, he was he was the chair, and he still is the chair at this time. So, uh, so they're aware of that, and they know they know that we want to get to them as well. So, just wanted to fill you in on that. Uh, but it's going to be June first. Just one quick comment: as you know, I was down in, at an Urban Alliance meeting on Friday, and uh, a lot of other communities there, and um, I think everyone <clears throat> everyone is comfortable with what uh, the legislature has put together. I think Representative Brooks was listening to us listening to the communities uh, probably isn't ideal from a financial standpoint, but it, it's going to give us the tools. They've given us, the communities, the tools to really do their own thing. You know, they're, they, at least they didn't take, go back, back, take away all of our power to run our cities like we want to, but 
it was, a, I think, a positive step, a step in the right direction. Uh, the league was very involved. A lot of us were very involved. So I think, um, I think as we as we move forward, it's going to be the way it was structured is very beneficial to the city of Oshkosh. And the last one I have for future agenda items is uh, our annual strategic planning uh, workshop. I'd gotten some feedback from council that they wanted to see some uh, some uh, earlier discussions prior to strategic planning. So if you could put these dates on your calendar, the the nor the traditional one with uh, Walter Jankowski, the all day one, that's uh, tentatively scheduled for Thursday, July 19th. If it, rather than trying to pull you all now, what I'd suggest is tr we're trying to give this as, to you as much advance as possible. That's a Thursday. Uh, try to see if that works to your schedule. And then the other part was more about uh, preparation for that, reporting back from uh, supervisors. We're going to have some supervisory workshop in May that we would like to fold into a workshop in June, uh, the third, to, third Thursday in June, excuse me, June 21st is the other date we're looking at. So if you can take a look at your schedule, see if you can maybe be flexible in, in trying to schedule that, that would again be an all day retreat. Uh, the idea would be uh, department heads and council uh, working and we're going to have uh, another consultant you may recall, uh, Ben Faust. He was, uh, he was uh, met with the council of about four years ago, uh, early part of strategic planning. Uh, Ben's going to be back to uh, work on that communication team building type of aspect. What is the date again, please? That would be June 21st. They're both Thursdays. So if you can look ahead and see if your schedule can accommodate that, obviously, as many council members as possible would be would be great and that's all I had just to mark your calendars and save the date and we'll, and we'll yes. get back to you okay now we're at the point of uh, citizen statements to council it's a second opportunity to city for citizens to address the council Pam I have no one registered all right uh, now council member announcements and statements uh, this is me this is unity and community I've talked about this before uh, uh, it'll be on May 5th at the Leach Amphitheater from 11 to 3. Um, we have assembled an incredible group of um, sponsors and our, our team. As I mentioned, Yang is part of it. She has been really just a phenomenal member of this group. But we have people from the Oshkosh Area School District, the University, the District Attorney's Office, uh, members from the uh, Hispanic community, uh, African-American, we've got some refugees involved. So we brought together as diverse a group of people as we could fit around a huge table. And it's, it's been a real delight working on this. Uh, it's it's kid-oriented. Uh, we're encouraging families to attend. Um, the, the Oshkosh North uh, communities students are doing interviews on Green Bay Television, promoting the throne. They're going through the city, handing out posters. I mean, these kids are just dynamite. Um, but I encourage everyone to attend. It's very educational. We've got the world into seven, uh, not continents, but regions based on food. Um, we've got about, uh, I think, 13 vendors. There's a lot of people coming from the former, the former Soviet Union. Uh, but we want it, it's educational for kids. The, the food there is, we've asked that all the food samples be authentic to that part of the world and realizing that not every kid has a real adventuresome taste or palate, we have pizza there for the kids too. But it's free to the public. So I encourage everyone uh, that can attend, uh, come, it'll be at the Leach Amphitheater and we'll be also introducing the 14 Lake Fly Community Art Project that day. And everyone's invited to vote for their favorite. Uh, I would also invert, encourage the council, if you'd like to be a volunteer, <coughs> uh, let Kathy Snell know. She's in the back of the room. And she, she can assign you to a duty. Uh, but it's, it's just, it, it's been so much fun with this group of people, how we've all worked together and the enthusiasm and the, and the sponsors have come from a lot of people that usually don't get asked to sponsor something, so it's it's really drawn the community together. It's it's an, it's going to be an exciting program. It's music, nonstop music from 11 to 3 with all the different uh, cultures. Uh, and I won I won I getting a, a accordion player and a yodeler, so we're covering as many bases as we can. But uh, <coughs> it's uh, four hours of entertainment and food and education for kids. So. 
I'm sure you'll like the volunteer. You guys. Yes. Uh, that's <laughs> Can't wait. That's called shaming. That's it. Yeah. Voluntold. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's it for me. City Manager just, roll off. Just to let you know, Mayor, I, due to park commitment, I'll be out of town all weekend that weekend. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, four items, uh, just a brief counsel on. Uh, the first one is the professional services agreement with Wolverine fireworks display uh, in the past It's been barred a lot of there. They've this is the new name of them So it's the same company that we've been using and this for the festival foods fireworks show mayor and I talked It's just that's uh, festival foods because they uh, cover half the cost and uh, city covers the other half They get the naming rights for that and we're and since we don't sell groceries. It's okay that we don't get naming rights, but uh, Appreciate festival but foods. We, the uh, city pays for half but city pays for half of it. Absolutely. Um, Oshkosh Corp update is in your uh, uh, packet. Uh, I finally got a question asked from me in the past week. Well, when is the groundbreaking? Let's let the snow melt and, and we'll, we'll worry about that. Uh, the archaeological work is progressing, even though it got it, last week completely messed it up. So that, that threw it off completely. But uh, UW Milwaukee, uh, they've been very, <coughs> very cooperative. Appreciate all the work they've been doing to try to keep that going. Uh, so it keeps going, and so I'll have an update for you on May 8th. Uh, uh, future steps for resolution of inactive liquor licenses. Um, now that the renewal process is upon us, uh, some of those individuals whose licenses have been uh, inactive for over a year, council extended them. Uh, my opinion that the next step is to really do a... Uh, a hearing for non-renewal of those for those who who have applied for those licenses yet again there are some that haven't applied yet and if they don't apply no problem it, yeah. they just they're just gone uh, but for those who have been inactive um, we'd like to schedule something get it done a little sooner to actually get those folks moving if they've got anything active I think the council would want to know that so uh, what I'd suggest is maybe look at May 22nd for those that we can send those out and just get the ball rolling on it. Mm -hmm. This is going to be very difficult. I, I don't want to. I don't want to mince words that we we haven't done this before. But but I think the feedback that I received from council and the staff's discussion, we think this is the next thing to do in our process. And I think getting more licenses available. Somebody complimented us on you know giving up the license in Marion Road to make things happen. But that was the license that the city had been holding. We all need to let go of these licenses to to put them in a place where we can make most use of them uh, by having them available for people. So we'll schedule that for May 22nd. Um, and then update on possible consolidation of Grand Opera House Advisory Board and Landmarks Commission. I have uh, prepared two draft options for council to consider. Uh, the mayor and I discussed it. And uh, what we did was we pulled members of the Grand Opera House Advisory Board on their interest in continuing because that kind of would dictate whether or not one option was even necessary or another. Uh, very few members have expressed an interest in continuing. A couple have, and so I think that leans us towards the option. So at the next meeting, I'll be presenting the options. The the ordinances are effectively there, uh, but I want to at least I want to recommend one. And essentially, what it would do is it would provide alternate uh, status for members of the Grand Opera House Advisory Board. That would give them the opportunity to kind of get ingrained into the committee it become familiar with its operations and as time goes on get them uh, if they want to be appointed to a, a regular status they can do that as well plus we, as we were we uncovered some wonderful things as we were going through that whole board and commission study and five of the six members of the, of the uh, landmarks commission their terms expire all in May we need to restagger those terms uh, and so the mayor and I talked with the chair Shirley Maddox about how we do that so that we have good turnover but not all sudden turnover so uh, we'll be including that in the package so that the council sees what we're thinking about before uh, make the change to the board and then do the appointments before the end of May which was kind of the idea uh, so that's that's what I have and then uh, with that said uh, one of the items that the council had deferred action on was forming a, a reforming of the uh, Human Relations Commission. Now that we are done with really the last of our reorganization, it'll probably be appropriate to bring that back. And so I'll be bringing that back to council uh, 
sometime after the dust settles on the on the reorganization of these other boards and commissions. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, with that, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Adjourn.